You should have two boyfriends. You should have him, and then you should have like a special occasions boyfriend. Yeah. It just pops the one that in. shows up with flowers. Yeah, he just shows up. He's like, "Happy birthday!" <laughs> Dear Shandy, welcome back to Dear Shandy, listeners. It is caller day, mm-hmm. Andy. Exciting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we are joined today by Kate. Kate, thank you for joining us. Thank you, Kate. Hi, thanks for having me. (laughs) Do you mind giving us your age, your city or region, and your story? Yes, I'm 25. I'm in the Bay Area in California. Um, I wrote in because I feel like I'm hung up on what seems like a pretty minor problem, I think. My partner is a year older than me. Um, He's 26, and we've been together for four years now. I don't know. Things are, I think, in the terms of what I value in a relationship, we kind of have everything that I could want, you know, like really good communication, a lot of fun together still, um, kind of supporting each other's kind of general goals in life. And we have a lot of, I don't know, I won't, I don't want to say highbrow. I would, I would not claim that all of our conversations are all highbrow, but they're all fun and interesting, like points of thinking. But we were talking about marriage maybe two years in and you know this is a great idea I think obviously I think most people would agree you're talking about marriage before a proposal is a good idea when, um, just, just sorry to interrupt but when you say we were talking about marriage who brought up the topic of marriage he brought it up first Interesting. I guess good to know the context for that is he's always been a little more he's had more relationship experience I think he was definitely more on the train for long mm-hmm term relationships before I was. Um, it took me a little a bit of thinking on that one uh, for sure. the first year or so. Yeah, two years in, we were kind of starting to talk about it and mutually agreeing that we wanted to commit in the long term and get married eventually. Um, and that's where it kind of something, something got missed there. He thought that that was like, that was the engagement, like us mutually saying like, yes, you know, we both want to get married. That is true. <laughs> but um, I think it's probably because I said I wanted a low key engagement. Didn't you know? I think that was like the time right after all the flash mobs on YouTube, all the like, <laughs> you know, that whole thing. Um, and right when like promposals for like our younger siblings, you know, are starting to become a spectacle, I was like, I don't want that. And I think he took it so literally, like, oh gosh, I don't want to make her feel embarrassed or uncomfortable. So, like, we'll just talk about it mutually. So we're engaged. <laughs> and then, um, Bless his heart. Later, I know. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay. Continue. Sorry. <laughs> I felt that later. But in the moment um, that Christmas, somebody at his Christmas party, like congratulated me and was like joking around like, you know, you better tell me your registry. I'll get you that like great, you know, stand mixer you've been talking about. And I was like, I bet you to what? What are you talking about? <laughs> what what event are you like? I was kind of playing it off. But afterwards, we were walking back to like public transit. And I was like, how? What are you talking like? Did I miss my own engagement? Like I <laughs> like, I mean, obviously, I was like present at the time. But I think the uh, significance was lost on me. So I was pretty upset at first and kind of had to like, OK, I did. I did hear him out. He was really embarrassed. Um so, but you had it correct. Like he thought that wow. was it. And the he... least romantic engagement I've ever heard of in my life. <sighs> Don't say yes, that. That's, that's really lazy. <laughs> it really is la- lazy. It's, is it lazy or did he think that he was nailing it for her? Okay. We're, we're starting to talk over you. I want you to get through the story, <laughs> but I just want to confirm that he indeed saw that conversation as your, as the proposal. More or less. Yes. He was like, remember that time when like, we went on that hike together and it was like a beautiful day and we were talking about marriage and we both said we wanted to do And I was like, yes, but we were just agreeing. <laughs> like we have, you know, important conversations and we agree and that's good. <laughs> you, should, <laughs> you should give him the like how to proposal for dummies book. <laughs> My, uh, for what it's worth before you finish your story, I think we're both, we both agree with you <laughs> oh yeah yeah we're definitely fully in agreement I'm sure, with you. yeah i'm sure no one disagrees with you yeah. on this yeah yeah you're okay. right yeah and you're right to be, <laughs> a, to be little, say that. a little upset about it yeah frankly i, I think he's my... a little naive maybe okay uh, it's innocent na- naivete yeah but i guess still. my book for dummies was like if you use the words will you marry me then it's a proposal right it could be like the you know yes lounging on a Saturday or some more fancy. But when you say those words, right, those like there is meaning being transmitted. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like uh, 
significant. Agreed. <laughs> it, it shouldn't have to be said, but you are correct. that Those are the words that need to be said. It's true. And just culturally, it's amazing that he kind of missed that memo. What is his culture, if you don't mind me asking? Um, like American white? I don't know. If that, if that, many <laughs> yeah, people just, relate to that differently. <laughs> it's just interesting how like he's born and raised in this country and Okay, we're getting ahead of ourselves. Okay, so, right. so you have the conversation with him, and he confirms that he did. That was yes. the proposal. Mm -hmm. um, and then just to like briefly answer that side thing, he's more of the rom com watcher, or not watcher. He's more of the romantic. I would actually, I still watch more rom coms, but he's more of the romantic than I am. Um, I would say in general, like he was the first to say "I love you," the first to kind of you know. So this is why this was kind of out of left field that he isn't normally the one to kind of not get significance out of something like this um after that i guess he was kind of like like i want to make it right but like we kind of talked it through and i was like i don't know a redo feels like dis not disingenuous because i knew it would be genuine but i feel like it's less special to be like okay surprise me or like you know you can't be scared and it accurately lose a you know a hiccup if, if you know what's going to happen <laughs> right that sort of same analogy um so we kind of just went on and off, like maybe I'll propose. Now it's like my turn and it'll be a surprise. And I was like, well, I don't, I don't know. Mm. And we just kind of sat on it for a little while because we didn't feel like there was a rush to, you know, be married or anything right away. We were just mutually agreeing, you know, two years ago. But it's been about four years. And the only reason it's coming up now, I'm in a master's program and like, you know, moving is a thing and we do want to live. We're not currently living together, but we want to. And so like, that was going to be part of like, I'll go do a program. Obviously COVID happened, but hopefully next year I'll finish my program and we'll move like family wise. My family is pretty conservative and they had like some money saved for me as a child, you know, like I guess back then they were already like college is going to be expensive. We should save some money. Nice. <laughs> um, but we thinking. their, uh, their stipulation was we're not going to pay for you to live with your boyfriend like we won't give you the money for school to do that. So like you can choose to, he's understandably, you know, annoyed by that, but Bern is still not going to rush to get married because we're going to stay on the same timeline that we wanted to plan for. But I may have to find money and other means like take out loans or something else to kind of there. I guess the, the hold on these shifting plans were partially influenced by that. <laughs> to be clear, they didn't want you living with someone to whom you were not married. Correct. Like the, the aunt, you know, the mindset of why don't you just get married then? <laughs> but we're like, I would say we're both relatively level headed. My partner and I like, we're not just gonna get married so that we yeah. can accept some some money from my parent. You know, that's not very sensible. <laughs> wow, good for you. That's well done. It's hard though. Absolutely. I would say that was a hard one. <laughs> On hard many levels family mm -hmm. relationship but <laughs> yeah that can be confusing yeah that would be just frustrating also like just kind of trying to reason with that uh -huh. especially since you intend to get married it's not like he's some boyfriend you've right. had for a couple of months is that how's, how's your relationship like just overall what, what would you give it on a scale of one to ten <laughs> i would say i'm i think i'm the one who's always looking for problems i'm like this can't be this good that's not allowed there must be something I'm missing. So I would say like, like a, like an average eight, eight and a half. And then, you know, fluctuation for life, I guess. So the reason I actually like sent it in, like sent the letter or email in was that we were talking about marriage, you know, all these other moving money parts, I guess. Um, but then this past Christmas, we were like, you know, it, it was like the proposal I probably would have wanted, like, you know, buy the tree, just a sue. He said, will you marry me? And I was like, yes. And I was like, that was really nice. And then the week after we were looking at rings online because COVID <laughs> and like we couldn't go in person, like we might've wanted to go look. And then he was like, yeah, these all like seem nice. And I guess he was like more passive about it. And I felt like I had to like take the onus to like contact the jeweler. jeweler. He was like, yeah, whatever feels right to you. Cause he's like, I, we have vastly different tastes. And I messaged him because yeah. I was like, why am I emailing this person? For a ring and I felt kind of embarrassed saying like it's for me so I wrote to them saying like 
it's it's for my partner but i'm like no but it's for me i just feel embarrassed being the one <laughs> buying it for myself <laughs> uh, does that bring us to present day like have you had any yes. other conversations okay. about it not really i know he feels like i don't know how else to like make this better like i thought that christmas was good like that moment was nice and like is there more and i'm like why am i still upset about it because <laughs> i'm still i'm like on the last finishing part with the jeweler jeweler through email um so it's just like a reminder and i'm like why am i upset, <laughs> I'm so upset. i can i mean i can see why <laughs> I don't oh think, yeah, yeah i totally see why you're upset my thing is this it's like if this as, as on its own um might be something that is not that big a deal in the end. It's annoying and you would have liked it to be different, but in the end, it doesn't necessarily have an enormous amount of weight on your relationship. My question is, is does this behavior that he's exhibiting, which is very specific behavior, does this leak into other areas of your relationship and cause dissatisfaction in other areas? Because on its own, I don't believe it's annoying. And as you yourself said, it's, in the grand scheme of things, on the minor side. Yeah. Right. Like, this is technically, like, it's I feel like it's only when these, like, little, like, milestone things, you know, like, holidays or, like, gift giving. It's, like, gift giving so specific, you know, and I feel like he's pretty generous in his life in general. It's, like, really mm -hmm. just these, like, kind he's of He's just more not great at it. Date-centered, you know, like, birthdays and stuff. Yeah, his gift giving is not his, I don't know, love language, Forte. I guess. <laughs> Yeah. He also, it um, also seems like he's not great with formalities. He's not yes, really tuned that's to that. That's probably it. Oh, I was just going to say that no. this is our like, like he is, it's not like he's proposed to other people before. So like, I think both of us being kind of like, you know, like, how do you know what you, how you want that formality to go unless you've maybe done it or, you know, you get your idea from somewhere else. Sure. I mean, he's watched a lot of rom-coms, so he has no excuse. Yeah. <laughs> no excuse there. And her saying she wants a low key proposal. Yeah, it's very you were you were laying it on a silver platter and he just gave it to and you, you in a by the way, bag. we're laying something very easy on a silver platter. Yeah, you weren't easy. saying you wanted the flash mob. You were saying Yeah, no like trail of rose petals into like a heart shaped bed. That was a terrible oh god, can you imagine? <laughs> That happens. Sounds horrible. Don't, don't, don't diss it. There um, might be people so, for whom that happened. So getting back to it, though, I, I would like you to answer my original question, which is, does this type of behavior leak into other aspects of your relationship and, and bother you? And what exactly can you get in touch with uh, why it bothers you? And I'm not saying, obviously, there are surface reasons why it bothers you. It bothers me just hearing it. But I'm saying, what is it really getting to? There's two questions. One, the first one you I already asked. The second one is, what is it about it that really eats at you? What is the specific thing that's eating at you? Is the trait that he's exhibiting? Yes. For the first question, I think the reason why it surprises me so much is because I feel like it doesn't really leak in that often. It's mm -hmm. really only like Valentine's Day. You know, he tries his best and I, I really appreciate that, but it's, you know, so it's, it's like really just these specific moments. I wouldn't mm -hmm. say like, this is an example of like how he's ungenerous or not thoughtful. I feel like mm -hmm. he is in like the smaller ways, which probably is more important, you know, in sure. the long run. Yeah. Um, it is. So for example, answer, when you yeah. were like house hunting or apartment hunting, or mm -hmm. you planned on moving in together, is he pulling his weight on finding the right place and just sort of a team player in that. Mm -hmm. I would say so. Even like, cause he currently lives in his own apartment right now. Like even then he wants me to make sure I feel at home. He's, you know, asking like, what can I do to make like asking for input? So it's not just him making home decisions or like, how can this feel more, you know, easy for you when you are here? You know, I feel like he is very attuned to that. And, and is he, has he ever planned trips that you guys have gone on anything just like a weekend or a big trip or anything like that yes okay I think i'm more of the planner so he's usually like okay if you really want to like i'm not going to stop you but he <laughs> has planned them in the past <laughs> and you would say that it's equal the spearheading of wanting to get married like that it's both of you Sounds or like it. more him more you like it, it's he's, he's more consistent because i I definitely wanted, I think, 
be only because of like professional reasons, like being still in school is the only thing that for me, I'm like, I wish I was just like, you know, stable in a job and all these things that he has. But relationally, I think we're both still pretty like we do want that as the eventual goal. So it actually sounds like he's more steadfast in wanting to get married, mm-hmm. would sounds you say? Yes. And so now I want to hear the answer to the, Andy's second, second question. Second question, yeah. <laughs> uh, we interrupt this episode for a very, very important announcement. An ad. An ad, yeah. <laughs> it is an ad. But that doesn't mean, just because we're getting paid to talk about it doesn't mean we don't like it. I mean, we're pretty much doing this out of love, mostly. <laughs> we do really like the Hello Toshiba Day. Yeah. It's true. Yeah, I want. I would do this for free. I would just stand on a corner <laughs> talking about the Hello Toshiba Day and, and probably people would think I'm crazy, but I would do that for free. So my point is, is that, is that the Hello Toshiba Day is fantastic. Mother's Day is coming up. Mm-hmm. And what better gift for the woman who brought, you know, brought you to life yes. um, to, to help her bring other things to fruition. Yes. In a more... Um, Efficient. Yeah. Conducive. And and, conducive. Um, productive. Manner. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if that was the right word to end that on, but suffice to say, the Hello Toshiba Day does upgrade your entire um, number two situation. Yeah. And, and, and our mothers are a little behind the times, so they, they need to be educated. And what better way to educate them than to give them the gift of, of just fantastic number twos yes. on Mother's Day? Absolutely. The Hello Toshiba Day would make a great Mother's Day gift. Mm -hmm. So give the gift of a clean butt. Go to hellotoshi.com slash Shandy for 10% off plus free shipping. Yep. And this is, again, a special offer for our listeners. So go to hellotoshi.com slash Shandy for 10% off. That is hellotoshi.com slash Shandy. Um, The second answer, I mean, we could dig deep, I guess. Um, I feel like I was a kind of an ugly duckling in high school. Um, and you know, I never was really asked to prom or like asked, like there was no gestures Uh, weren't something that I'd really ever Mm -hmm. experienced. Like in college, I feel like I dated for the sake of like getting experience, like just to get to know myself better as like a person and other people. Um, but as you know, you know, hanging out, there's no like gesture to, you know, what are we, (laughs) um, that kind of process. Um, so I feel like because this is like an example of like, this is an opportunity for a gesture. I personally have never like been on the receiving end of a gesture, like, or I guess a specifically romantic gesture like that. Um, yeah. And it can feel, I guess, like that's it. I mean, you, that you don't get them feasibly should the happen once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah right. That's it. It's the end of the line. Yeah. Um, have you ever, has, has he ever come through? With a gift. Has there ever been a situation where he's really come through? Or a gesture. On a gesture or a gift where it was like really romantic and it really hit the spot. Has that ever happened? I think we approach gifts differently. <laughs> Clearly. Um, he, because I think, like I've thought about this, I think because he has, you know, the stability and kind of steadfastness in his like professional and like home life also, um, that he's kind of, you know, cultivated for himself he will like see me, you know, struggling with my like super old computer from like seven years ago and like notice. And like, so for my birthday gift me, you know, something like really nice, but it's not like romantic, like laptops aren't romantic, but it was really thoughtful Mm -hmm. Um, and practical and practical, which I enjoy, but in my heart, I'm like, but also flowers would be nice. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Like I would be happy with a less monetarily expensive gift what what is his love language with you like what is his way of showing love to you the most salient way he shows love probably quality time and acts of service Mm -hmm. um i think also i'm kind of a gift giver like for my friends also so i feel like i'm a very like you know the person to write like a handwritten card and like wrap it really nicely and so maybe that's Mm -hmm. also me (laughs) kind of putting in lots of the effort but like I don't have gift giver friends really. So they show their, you know, appreciation for me in all these other ways. But yeah, but a romantic relationship is different. Right. Too. When you receive his, whatever his gestures are, um, or acts of service, do, are you really appreciative or like, you like effusive, like, oh my God, so nice. Thank you. Like that kind of stuff. Or are you just like, oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> I would say I'm pretty like, wow, that's really thoughtful. Cause sometimes, you know, he'll like 
so you give fancy bread and you know make dinner and it's really nice right. and i feel really appreciated that so way. you give him a satisfying like Yes. Congratulations. I, I see what you're nice. getting at because positive reinforcement <laughs> right. can be a lot more effective than a, sure. you're doing this wrong. This is how I want you to do it. Yes. Uh, this is, uh, I got to say, this is a tough one, Kate. It's tough. It's tough because mismatched love languages are not really something that improve. It's just sort of something that you have to navigate. I genuinely believe that. Mm-hmm. Like you can express to the other person what you would appreciate. Yeah, And you can both make that effort to meet somewhere in the middle, but it's just never going to really be locked down. But I also don't think that's anywhere close to a deal breaker. It is minor in the grand scheme of things. And it would certainly be far easier to find someone who does all those gestures than it is to find the connection that you have with him. Right. I I agree agree with that. And have you, you know, there's always opportunity to improve this. You may have a lifetime together, a long lifetime. Right. You're a lifetime of gifts. A, li- <laughs> a lifetime of gifts that missed the yeah, mark. A lifetime of electronics <laughs> and uh, you know functional stuff. I think there's time for you to sit down and have like a, it's kind of awkward. It's not the most exciting conversation. You're not going to look forward to it, but maybe sit down and like really be like, we have to talk about this. This is like a nice talk. We're not breaking up. But I want you to know that this is really important to me. Even tell him, I don't know if you've already done this, but tell him what you told us. Have you? We've had like these conversations like three different times since two years ago. And the oh, most okay. recent one was kind of disappointing because he was like, I don't know what else to do. Like I've uh, already apologized and kind of tried here. And I he feels mm-hmm. like at, all, at a loss. Okay, um, so you so have had like, this sit down talk. Okay, sorry. Yeah, and he's kind of like, I don't know the cultural like, connotation of like what you wanted secretly in your heart, and like I didn't envision, you know, like it what ended. What cultural? It ended, was, what was you talking about? Like the yeah. expectation of like the romantic gesture. He's like, I, when you said low key, I kind of took it at face value. <laughs> like, I wish uh, I didn't, but I had, and I think that was just the last. I guess the last conversation we had about it. I feel less great about only because it felt like I was harping on it. Like it was a third time we had talked about it, you know, over, over three years so or two years. So not Yeah, like- but it also says something <laughs> that it still bothered you after that long. Like you didn't feel like enough of an effort was being made. Like even though you know that's not his strength, you would, I think, appreciate even a 10% effort in that direction. Which, Is he I making that so. much? 10%? And, I mean, I think, yeah, this past Christmas felt like that. And then the only reason it came up again was I was like, do you want me to like have the ring delivered to your apartment? And I just like, let you give it. (laughs) The ring thing is really getting me like, and I understand he sounds so practical, so pragmatic. He's clearly Mm. like, well, we don't have the same taste. So why would I go through the work of getting a ring that you're not going to like? We'll just cut to the chase. I get that. But how could he not understand like it's just it's so many levels of not getting why Mm -hmm. you wouldn't want it to happen that way is he lazy in any aspect of his life other than this definitely not okay i would say and even like the beginning of our relationship like we spent a lot of it long distance and like i know he's capable of romantic gestures like you know we talk on the phone and like read to each other and like send each other letters like that you know bullshit (laughs) for lack of better words it's all nice and cute you know like it's not like he's not capable of doing those things or felt moved to do them himself you know like he has been before (laughs) in early in the relationship Um, or just early but extended like we were long distance for like a year and a half so like it wasn't like just for that you know six month honeymoon and then that was it or something like it kind of lasted over the year and a half that we were apart (laughs) have you expressed the ugly duckling side of this to him that you said you felt like you didn't get asked to prom or you said you didn't get asked to prom just like the sort of emotional background of why this affects first of all it would affect anyone mm-hmm. <laughs> i just want to get that out there i think that I, I don't know many people who would be completely okay so we're really on your side yeah. on this but i'm just wondering if you told him exactly like the the root of right. why it maybe bothers you as much as it does that was an interesting conversation. He didn't actually go to like public high school. It's so, like he was, he had like a religious upbringing and was homeschooled. So he went straight to college. And that's also why he's a little more stable financially than I am. Like he started all that. Like he's professionally like, you know, three or four years ahead of me, like in his everything. He didn't go to 
high school didn't have that like you know what is prom if you've never been to high school Mm. oh wait a minute Um, wait a minute wait a minute so you told him about the prom thing how you felt like an ugly duckling and his response what was his response Was, was he like oh i didn't i never had prom so i don't know well he was like oh i like i think he chalks it up to like i was having a moment of insecurity about like you know my own personal like self-esteem like it didn't really have anything to do with like um you know anything outside of myself because like I guess we all have our moments of insecurity and he was like oh you know it's not but like look at where you are now you know like that kind of thing I guess whereas you know we all know when we're adolescents and things feel like the end of the world (laughs) or like formative even if they aren't that Mm -hmm. relevant anymore 100 (laughs) percent I don't this isn't just a moment of insecurity in my opinion, I, I, I don't think so. I, I, that kind of bothers me a bit if I'm honest, I, even though I like, he sounds lovely. He honestly does. You know? he, sounds, <laughs> yeah, he sounds great. Do you, how are your con, this is going to sound really relationshipy, <laughs> but how are your conversations about your feelings? We, like, do you ever express feelings that are unrelated to the relationship, but just feelings? How is he, how supportive is he when you have those conversations? Or understand. Where he's actually pretty also emotive generally and will be kind of like the kind to like get into our feelings you know at like 11 p.m and then it ends up being this like you know all night thing and we're like we should go to sleep it's 5 a.m so we when we get into feelings like we get into feelings um and he's capable of that yes like that was i think even like on our third date or something you know the classic like i'll drive you home and then we just sat in the car and talked for like until the sun started to come up. Like, that's the basis of our relationship. Um, I think this guy just has a blind spot. He has a blind that's spot. It. Yeah. It's one spot, and it's blind. You're going to have to live with it, I think. It comes you're up, like, have all the time. Like, every birthday, every Valentine's Day. Every yeah, Christmas. you're going to be reminded you should of have like a. You should have two boyfriends. You should have him, and then you should have, like, a special occasions boyfriend. Yeah. It just pops in. that shows in. up with flowers. Yeah, he just shows up. He's like, happy birthday. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You're proud of that idea? You like a little proud of it. Uh, I, it's just a tough one because it's not a deal breaker. As, no. as you know, right. but we all know it's not a deal breaker. Do you love, are you in love with him? Yes. Okay. Then, you're, then that's it. Much. It's an unfortunate thing. It's a handicap you're going to have to deal with. Yes. There's oh, always no, there's time so- for improvement. You have many years. The difference for this one, I feel like, is like, you know, you can make better on future birthdays, but like, will we just get engaged every year until it's good? (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, this doesn't, or like a read, I guess this is the only thing that I'm like, how do I, how do we make this like a good memory instead of a bad one? (laughs) Have you asked him that? He was like, I'm not, like, I'm not sure because I feel like I've mucked it up already, (laughs) which I understand that how you how he, I, why he would feel that way. I, I honestly think you should give him a humorous ultimatum. You should be like, <laughs> next month, you pick a day. I want you, you're a smart guy. Just put something together, anything. Just <laughs> figure, do something special and it's going to work. Just no pressure. Just please <laughs> do it. Done. Make him do it. Literally. I mean, he's not going to do it any other way. The guy's completely paralyzed. In this department. Yeah. And I, I kind of agree with Andy in that it almost feels like I actually think, especially considering his love of rom-coms, wonder (laughs) if you did sort of break him in with this. You sort of ripped off the bandit and sort of forced it on him. And by that, I mean, have the ring shipped to his place and really lay down an expectation. I wonder if, if it would it would be less scary than he thinks it is. I genuinely think that because it doesn't make any sense. He loves you. He wants to marry you. He's he's willing. He wants to understand you and talk about feelings. He's definitely getting defensive on this front. But I I gotta say, Andy, like I, it sounds a little silly, but I, not ultimatum, but definitely a sort of, hey, this was your job. The ring was your job. I've done that. So now you're gonna you're gonna excel. You're gonna go back, <laughs> give me the proposal I wanted, and that I've expressed that I wanted. I want you to surprise me. And make this a memory that we can look back on and always think of fondly and turn it into a funny story of like how long it took to get to that great proposal. I can see the temptation right now to be like, okay, you got the ring and then put the ring on. Okay, now we're engaged. And you just sort of don't want to be a pain 
You don't want to nag him, like you said. I hate asking for things. Even I know. When he got me the laptop. I was like, that's too much money. <laughs> she sounds like me. Yeah. And he got me the Dyson blow dryer for Christmas oh. once. And I was like, I can't have a $400 blow dryer. We're returning it. I mean, it is a ridiculously expensive blow dryer, but it's a tremendous blow dryer. No, not, <laughs> not sponsored. Like you even not know. sponsored. <laughs> I believe I did the research. You just like anything Dyson. The guy in the store tr- did it on my head. <laughs> did he really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's a good blow dryer. I don't even know. I don't know what's going on. Anyway, so uh, I would even say set a date. Even You can even set a date. Just say, this is the day. Get it going. Like Do something. You might feel micromanaged. <laughs> I don't want to micromanage him either. You're not. You're going like- to never get married. Never oh, you can set the date for the proposal or for the for, for the, the proposal for the proposal redo. I don't think I think she's done enough by designing and talking to the jewelers about her own damn Just give ring. Give them a tight window. Was the guy really needs some guidance <laughs> here? You know, and it could be like a, a rom com. You could think of it like that. It's like uh, twenty eight days to propose, or I don't know. That's a bad title, but you get the Terrifying. point. Terrifying. <laughs> twenty eight <Yeah>. days, <laughs> or else. Yeah. For me, I do think that it this should come with more fleshing out of why it bothers you as much as it does. Although I do think it would bother just about anyone, but given your answer to Andy's second question, it's, this is more than just a moment of insecurity. It's, you want to feel cherished. You, you want to feel like you want to feel like a woman. I I don't think that's something to be embarrassed by or ashamed of nor should it be written off as like a moment of insecurity. It, It's fine. I mean, I do the standy all the time. I'm literally this week. I was like, you don't compliment me on my looks enough. I said that to him. <laughs> and it sounds like whiny and insecure. Me. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I'm like, tell me I'm pretty, you exactly. know, <laughs> but it's, I don't think there's any shame in that. If you don't get it from him, where are you going to get that? Eddie, you have self-esteem. We can definitely tell you have self-esteem. These things, especially given you are a gifts person, they matter to you. They're how you register love. I don't like the idea of you kind of letting it sweep under the rug. and Because again, this is not going to get better. Mm -mm. (laughs) It's not. It's going to get worse. It's for sure something you're going to live with. We all know this. It's something about him that's just not quite, you guys are just not really aligned it's not snapped in place it never will be just it's who you are as people and that's why i do think it will take active work and i don't mean like nagging but just active like meeting in the middle at some point even if you never reach the middle either of you it's just the effort it really matters the effort matters that's what i don't like is the sort of what else do you want me to do about it? I said, I'm sorry. Like I, I, I fucked it up. So, you know, that's sort of like writing yeah. it off. <laughs> what if you didn't, what if you didn't do something nice for one of these days for him, like his birthday or Christmas or whatever you guys celebrate? What if you just were like, uh, ah, here's a, here's a, a calculator. I don't know. <laughs> it's the best I I'm can not come sure. up with. I feel like I will say he also likes surprises more than I do. I'm very much like, you know, you know, like surprises within reason, right? I don't know. Right, but, but what like, if you took that away from him? How would he feel? Maybe give him a little bit of his own medicine. I think he feels like everything is special. So he's like, wow, this is great. <laughs> like every, like his bar is just not, <laughs> I think, like in terms of, I think I was thinking about what you said while you were talking, Charlene. And I think it, you're right. It's the like, when you can tell that there's been time put in and not so much like money or like, materials put into a gift i feel like when i can tell someone's like put time into it even if it's like homemade that mm-hmm. is like what matters and like even when he asked me to move in with him the first time he or gave me his like key to his apartment like he put it on like a card and like all like oh my god that's why that's i'm sweet. like yeah. that's why i'm not you know why is this so <laughs> different right it was really him. sweet he's got it he's got it in right him. like it, where'd it go or it's a hiding it's, or <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does have it in him. And the blind sp- it is a blind spot. That's exactly what it is. I got to say, I agree with Andy. I think that you are allowed and entitled to want a proposal that that you remember fondly, that makes you feel adored. And there's no shame in that. 
And especially combined with the ring. If he did the re- do over and you were like, oh, it's okay. Like I Got had to me ask a waffle for maker <laughs> that day instead. <laughs> waffle maker. That's Wait, a good one. Are you serious? Well, like it was Christmas. So like his big gift to me that day was a waffle maker. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can you describe exactly how he did the do over proposal? Um, we had like finished setting, we had like put the last ornament on the tree so that we like, cause we do one every year when like with the year on it and it was like very cute hug and it's like twinkly lights. And he like whispered into my ear. It was very sweet. Very nice. Like very yeah, romantic. You, want, you like this waffle maker? <laughs> yeah. That makes it sound like he like concurrently was like, and here's a waffle maker. But <laughs> <that> just... <laughs> I got you a waffle maker. <laughs> Romantic like waffle maker. So he, in the moment, he hugged you mm-hmm. and, and said, will you marry me? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. And After like expressly maker. saying that, you know, prior saying like, these are the words I want to hear. And then. Yeah. <laughs> and I want it low key. I, yeah. Yeah. So like it was it. And then the, like, then the subsequent ring conversation ended up like turning it back into this like, vague wishy-washy process again. (laughs) I just have a hard time believing that a 26-year-old American guy born and raised in this country who watches rom-coms so I'm I'm bewildered. Yes, it's strange. I agree with Andy. I think you need to put your foot down without being a drama (laughs) queen about it. And And I think you should lead with the backstory, why it bothers you as much as it does. You want to feel really chosen. You don't want to feel like you both just were like, yeah, well, okay, let's do this. Okay. That makes sense. Do you ever, do you ever cry in front of him? Yes. He cries more. Well, he tears up. I cry. (laughs) There is a difference. It's so true. (laughs) You don't cry. You, I've seen a couple of tear ups over all the years. It's true. Yeah. Yeah, I cry. (laughs) Yeah. I'm more the like, you know, he has to like, just do the, like the long, I'm just going to hold you until you stop, you know, like versus him. He's just wiping like one tear at a good movie. (laughs) That's it. You know, (laughs) (laughs) that was you at inside out. Totally. And I was bawling. (laughs) Totally. I also cried in um, Wall-E, the Pixar movie. Basically any Pixar movie. I was alone, though, in that movie theater. That's even There's a bunch of, like, little kids around me. That's actually so funny that you say that. He also, my my partner also did that. He went to actually see Inside Out on his own. And he was like, I'm just crying surrounded by children. I don't, it's happening. (laughs) I'm not the only one that's crying. (laughs) It It happens. Grown men do cry alone surrounded by little children in movie theaters. (laughs) Okay, Kate, is our take on this, I know this is not really like hard like advice, but Mm -hmm. is our take on this surprising or what you expected or what were you really thinking we might say? (laughs) To be honest, I thought you were going to be like, you're too young to get married. I think that's a, you should just not, (laughs) regardless of the details. I don't know. I'm skeptical. No. Our (laughs) reputations precede us, Andy. Uh, No, I don't want to be that guy. You're, you're fine. If you want to get married, you love him, you should get married. Yeah. Make, make, uh, <laughs> make a lot of waffles together. But uh, I think you should put your foot down on this thing. You deserve it. You deserve to have this day. Even if he screws it up, you want to see it. You want to see something. Show me something. Show me what you got. Yeah. Especially since you, at that point, having done all the work with the ring, will have really pulled your own weight in terms of the proposal. You really have taken all the hard work out of it. He knows you're going to say yes. You already have twice, technically, one and a half times. <laughs> and he has a ring that you love and that fits. You're not asking that much. No, and by the way, you're it is contrived, obviously, but you're just raising his like year, two year long contrivance that he's been slow playing. So you're not you said two two wrongs don't make a right, but all you're doing is playing his game. You're like, you want to be that contrived? I'm going to do something contrived now. I'm going to put the pressure on you. Do it right. I mean, to be honest, is contrived really that awful? I mean, most proposals are contrived in, in some, some way. Yeah. manner. A yeah. lot of people fully discuss that they plan on getting married. A lot of people go ring shopping beforehand. You know, you guys went a little further on each of these. You know, there's already been a quasi proposal you already have the ring that you chose but we're talking degrees 
I mean, our entire if in that case, our entire wedding was contrived because we were already married. <laughs> We've already revealed that. Oh, okay. <laughs> but you know what I mean? I think so many things about romance, weddings, marriages, proposals are contrived to some mm-hmm. degree. How organic can they possibly be? Mm-hmm. And they shouldn't be. And you know they what, shouldn't yeah. be spontaneous. Yeah, this should be something you think about a lot. That way. <laughs> well, particularly right. with a proposal. The proposals that are way too spontaneous and organic oftentimes result in the person being like, ah, yeah, not, yeah, not or, now. <laughs> or something, a little shotgun that... Yeah, either way. You want sh- it to be relatively like, you don't want to be super surprised mm-hmm. by a proposal. Usually if you're super surprised... You're probably going to say no. That's a much more bad experience, I think, in that sense. If you're like truly like, oh, God. Like shocked. Truly. You're like horrified. (laughs) I think overall, Shandy advice, two two things. The first is don't feel any shame in knowing this is something you require, you want, and recognize it'll be an ongoing thing in this relationship. Mm -hmm. Let's say he nails the proposal. It's still going to be a problem. Every gift, every Christmas, every birthday. And so what? You know, so what? Is it really the end of the world? You know he loves you. You feel his love in other ways. So it doesn't really matter that much. The uh, the second thing, if and when he does it, I think unless he bombs it, I think you have to really like, shower him with praise. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 it's like, yay, you thank did you. a good job. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> good, good, boy. Proposal, good, boy. good proposal. <laughs> and then I think you got to let it go. Yeah, you know, you got it's there will come a point where you just have to let this go, otherwise, it's going to breed resentment, it's going to turn into the ledger that we always talk yeah. about. Uh. This is part and parcel with who he is, the, per- the person you're marrying, and will be with ostensibly, hopefully, for the rest of your life. Yeah. You got to accept it and let it go. As long as you feel like he's making that effort to meet you towards the middle of where your love languages could intersect, the effort is really what matters. Sure. And positive reinforcement. You know, don't be afraid to go a little over the top when he does break out of his mold and do something really spontaneous and romantic. It works with animals. It works with children. It works with adults. It does. Yeah. Kate... I don't know if that was helpful, but we so. feel for you. Thank you. I you think that be, was good advice. <laughs> you should be happy that everything else is right. Yes. Most people can't find it. I agree. That. You yeah. have what everyone wants. Yeah. Think about that, which is that solid partnership with someone yeah. who wants to be with you and who you want to be with. A lot of people would kill for a guy whose only fault was screwing up yeah. special occasions. <laughs> who has one bizarre blind spot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, in the grand scheme of things, like you said, minor. Yeah. I agree. I feel validated just like knowing that like that's also true. That like, you know, there was no, you know, you should break up. I'd be like, oh God, I don't think so. <laughs> no, no, so we're not you. gonna tell you. Yeah. Could yeah. you imagine? Like, you know, we're we're not monsters. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Definitely. You catch me early in the morning, like I might say that. <laughs> but yeah, you know, who doesn't like waffles? And you know, you got a great relationship other than this. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Okay, well, good. Good luck. I want to. I want a follow up on this one. Mm-hmm. We don't always say that, by the way. <laughs> we don't. I, I'd almost go as far as saying I'd like the proposal videotaped. <laughs> we want a photographer, drone footage, which <laughs> which he should have. I think we need to go baby steps here. <laughs> no, he should do. We should pull out all the stops. The more over the top he goes, she, the less he could fail. The, the less he can fail. You know, given where he took things when you said you liked low key, it is possible you might need to say medium key to get (laughs) an actual low key proposal. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. That's true. (laughs) Or heavy key. Heavy (laughs) heavy key. (laughs) Yeah. High key. (laughs) Oh, do you think you will take our advice? I think so. I think you could say no. (laughs) I agree that, well, I agree that like the ring will provide, I think, the closure for me that like there is no other steps to this proposal that have yet to come. Um, And then, Regardless of how it goes, I think, I mean, I think it's pretty funny in its own way. Like, all, like it's already going in the funny direction. So hopefully Great. this yeah. will kind of I, I mean, close I, that. I, I hate to say it, and it's mostly from an outside perspective, the entertainment value, but this is kind of a rom-com situation. It's a rom-com situation <laughs> if he pulls through and 
Yeah. Even if he doesn't nail it, makes that effort. We're with still in the, the second act. I, I want to see a third act <laughs> yes. where he pulls it through. But but up until this point, this is essentially the plot to a, a rom com. Yes, and if he does pull through, like I said, this will turn this whole thing into a great memory. It's it'll be a fun, like you said, it'll be fully funny because you got what you want in the end, and it'll the journey to have gotten there will be funny. Yeah. But I I maintain that you should not need to leave the topic with your tail between your legs and be like, okay, well, I guess that's No, that. you're getting your proposal. You are getting <laughs> it. You tell him that Shani's coming after him if, if he doesn't do it. We're coming for I him. I will. <laughs> okay. Thank okay. you. Well, thank you for, for joining us and keep us posted, okay? All right. Sounds good. All right. Okay. Bye, Kate. Bye. Thanks. Bye. <sighs> oh, man. Uh, I... You want to go first? No. <laughs> We're both a little speechless. Uh, because it's it really falls into that gray zone of not being a deal breaker, but really, I, it's cause for concern. Yeah, it's a high grade non deal breaker. And also, in the interim, before we started this wrap up, yeah. I went over her email one more time and I'm pissed at myself for not bringing this up, or I'm pissed at her for not mentioning it. <laughs> So, so this got lost, but in her email, she wrote, with the ring buying process, he was like, I trust you. And I ended up being the one to reach out to the, a jeweler and I didn't feel comfortable outright asking him to pay for it. Since at this point, it just feels like a ring I picked out for myself and I'm too far down the line to have it feel like it was from him. It's not that I think the man should definitely pay for the ring. That's not what we're saying. I think that it's, it's a dual purchase it can be a dual purchase something about her paying for it doing all the research on it well the thing is she's already so deep into the not getting what she wants yes it's like insult to injury yes so gender roles aside he should have at least that should have been his thing like look i'm screwing up this proposal yeah, completely but I will at least pay for I'm, the I'm i'm the producer i'm financing yes uh, yeah, it's, he should it's, be insisting to pay for it. She yeah. she should not have to. Oh God, I'm so mad that we didn't <sighs> touch on this. Uh, it, uh, this is a whole other thing. This yeah. is a whole other iceberg. Tip of the iceberg is the money thing, especially given she said he's further along in his career. But again, he has gotten her nice, seemingly expensive gifts before. So it's it's, it's very out of character. There's some weird hang up the guy has about about rings and proposals. Rings and proposals. There's something strange there. Yes. Um, we could have gotten deep in like psychologically, like his parents yeah. and like where he's from and like what happened with his friends. And I, I don't know. It but, did bother me how he wrote off her talking about the past and why it really matters to mm -hmm. her as a moment of insecurity and how when she brought it up again, he started to get defensive. Like, well, I already fucked it up. Like, I already apologized. That reaction is what bothers me yeah. more so than him screwing it up in the first place. Because it's it, he's like basically throwing his hands up. Yeah. But we dug, we dug around. We're looking for ways in which it bleeds into the rest of the relationship, and it doesn't seem to. It no, seems like an isolated. But it's incident. so strange. It should bleed in, it and it doesn't. Should it's bleed totally in. ring fenced. Right. I don't understand how this is possible. It's, it's so unusual that that would be the case. But she also doesn't seem like the type of person to lie to herself, uh, or to make him sound better than he is. No, I think she was being actually very conservative about how much praise she was giving him. And yes. she still was like, no, it's, it's he's great. Yeah, she was like, yeah, yeah, we love each other. Like she begrudgingly <laughs> was like, yeah, it's he's a great. nice guy. He's a good guy. Yeah. We have a good relationship. Yeah. So, you know, it's one of those situations where you just kind of going to have to live with it and hope for the best and keep like giving a little pushes here and there and, you know, positive reinforcement. Don't make it like a huge deal where you get into these crazy fights about it because it's not worth jeopardizing the relationship. But, you know, particularly in her case, like she was like, it's kind of a little bit of a dream of hers, it's a little like bittersweet to be in a and relationship. it's not a weird dream. No, it's so every many... girl has the dream. She's just been deferred. Like she has never been able to capture it and she's really wanted it. I don't know if every girl has that dream, but every girl is entitled to have that dream. If she has a dream, that's not a weird dream to have. I'm going to get in huge trouble for saying every girl has that dream. You are? I'm uh, definitely. I'm sure buried. someone will be like. I'm buried. Yeah. yeah. Every you, you human can't has win. that dream. Yeah, every human. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's not. I don't think it's no, weird. No, it's not weird at all. 
And I, I honestly didn't really have a dream proposal in my mind. Yeah. But if you had done that, I would have been pissed. But I, I don't think what she's asking for is unreasonable. And I, I think she's on the verge of making too many concessions. And if she doesn't sort of put her foot down about this, he needs to pay for half of the ring. He does. Kate, when you watch this, he's paying for half of the ring. He is. I can't believe we didn't talk about the money thing. That really bothers me. Well, yeah, it's too much on her. Going she's to doing everything. And he's apparently professionally ahead of where she is. Well, that's what she said. It doesn't make any sense. Like, is she's he that weird. dense that? Oh, sorry, I correct myself. Is he that dense surrounding society's traditions around proposals where he would just let her go and he, pay I'm for her? I'm telling you, the rent? guy's got a, a giant blind spot. It's just... Or are we giving him too much credit? Are we being too generous? I'm taking her word for it that in every other way, the guy is great. Yeah. I mean, I think it's incredibly rare for him to have these traits and these, these th this type of behavior in these situations and it not bleed into the rest of his personality in the relationship. Agreed. But I'll take your word for it. Yeah. We have no choice but to take her word for it. Yeah. And if she is correct in that, then I maintain it's not a deal breaker. Definitely not a deal breaker. Pain but in it, the ass, though. But it's a pain in the ass. She's going to have to deal with it for potentially the rest of her life. It you know sucks. what this is? Is a need versus a want. Yes. She doesn't need this. Classic need versus want. She doesn't need an elaborate proposal. She doesn't need him to pay for the ring. Yeah. It'd be nice. He doesn't have to pay for all the ring. This is uh, too many concessions will breed resentment. This will resurface if it's not nipped in the bud sooner than Or later. she'll look elsewhere for, for that kind of uh That's the thing. Treatment. You know, she might meet... Oh God, I don't want to go down that path. <laughs> yeah, it's, too, it's pretty dark. Yeah, they're not even married but yet. I'm but, but let's just say it this way. When people do stray in relationships, it's because there is something they're missing. Thank you. Yes. That's thank. Well, that's so accurate. I love you. That's so accurate. This is at the fork in the road of either being the really the root of a long term problem in their relationship, yeah. or it can blossom. It could turn into a butterfly and be a funny anecdote that they reminisce about one day. It, it could be funny every occasion. Yes. It could become a funny thing yes. instead of like, an, oh, God, again, you screwed and up. And that comes down to how he responds. Yeah. It does. Because if he's going to choose the route of defensiveness and retaliation and sort of throwing up his arms and being like, well, what else do you want from me? Oh, I sucked at this. Then the, that's that's not effort. No. It's also playing the victim. I'm sorry, it is. Oh, I, I agree. And it makes her seem. It forces her to be naggy. It forces her to nag. Oh. But and you <laughs> and you know what's funny? It's like I look back at my experience. This made me think back to when I was like a real amateur. Okay, all well, this stuff. or 26. Be Did, even bef gonna... before that, okay. like I'm going way back, and like you know. Even my college days, even when I like had my first, my first real girlfriend mm -hmm. and like I tried, I was like, Ooh, I'm going to, this is going to be. And it was like the most generic, lame, like cheesy, like, and I was like, Oh, this is, I'm You're dropping like, a bomb it. on this one. <laughs> and it was like, and did any of them ever say like, Oh, this is dumb. This no. stinks. I'm not happy about this. They were like, Oh, you so can't sweet. lose. Even if in their mind, they're like, Oh my God, this is so cheesy. It's hilarious. They were happy because I clearly was trying and failing, but yeah. trying. And in failing, you succeed because you show that you care. Mm -hmm. All he has to do is fail with dignity mm -hmm. and she'll be happy. You can't lose. People it, want, even men, men and women like these gestures. It's like jumping All in. genders. <laughs> yes, all. There's not a single person who doesn't want to feel cherished by the person they're choosing to be with. Animals. Dogs want it. Yes. They want a special. You think a dog is not happy when he gets special <laughs> birthday treatment? <laughs> He's happy. It's true. And yeah. if you look at babies, young children, you know, before we start tempering how we react to things because of what society tells us is appropriate... A little kid, who is more stoked than a little kid on their birthday? No, I mean, I can't remember a happier day ever than my birthday, even when I got presents I didn't like. Yeah. It was still amazing. Yes. Everyone likes to feel special. Every living thing. Mm-hmm.
Everything. Everything. So make her feel special. Whatever Dude. his name is. <laughs> Kate's well, boyfriend Kate's, slash fiance. Yeah. Slash o- fiance to be almost again. fiance. <laughs> pre fiance. Yes. Kate's future husband. Step up. Yeah. The ugh, the ring buying thing. I'm so pissed that we didn't touch on that. Yeah. So we already wrapped, but we're circling back because we have an update. Yes, we, we interrupt this broadcast to bring you an emergency update. <laughs> because while you and I were rapping, Gabby called Kate to find out. We wanted to know about the paying of the ring. We didn't want to make assumptions. People don't know, but Gabby is our producer. We've mentioned Gabby enough times. But yes, Gabby is our <laughs> lovely producer. Lovely producer. Gabby, will you tune in and tell us? Yes. So she said... I asked him, so do you want to pay for it or should I? And he told me he'd be happy to pay for it and he could Venmo me. Romantic, I know. (laughs) It's so not surprising. I mean, nothing, nothing says I love you like Venmo. Okay, so it's on brand. It's on brand. It's exactly what you'd expect. Yeah, he could not have made that less romantic. This is a very weak move. Also, she texted you though. She's she emailed this and she said she was kind of put off. Large amounts of financial support is already a bit hard for me to accept. And I told him I'd think about it. I'm not really sure how to make the logistics of virtual money sending romantic yet. He put it on her to mention cost. And then he's like, I'll then mow you. It should have been like, what's the phone number of the jeweler? You've already done all the work. Right, right, right. But she, it's or, not like it's not like it, it's a surprise to him. He could get involved. She's like, "Here's the jeweler. Just go pay them." Like I already did all the work. Like it's not like it's a surprise she's to a, him. I will say she she is a little too accommodating. She's enabling. She's enabling him a little here. She's she's trying too hard. To, she she feels awkward about it, which I definitely get. But there comes a point, like I, t- I said, the training. You got to be like, I've done the work. Here's the phone number, and this is how, you know. Yeah. If if that's what she wants to happen, if they want to split it, that's fine too. They can do whatever works for their relationship. I'm not saying he has to buy the ring, but she shouldn't feel this uncomfortable asking him this, and he shouldn't put her in a position where she has to in the first place. That's the problem. Yeah. Is that she's in a position where she needs to bring it up. Right. He's not being proactive. He should have said, like, when you pick out the ring, let me know. And I'll take care of it. Yeah. Or we'll, t- we'll, t- you know, or I'm, we'll I'm, take care I don't want to insist take care that he <laughs> should buy the ring. You know, I, I don't want, I think that not everyone's in a financial position to do that. Although it sounds like he's in more of a financial position than she is. It should, She's a student. That's what I'm saying. And she gave up her, her money. <laughs> it should have been discussed. From her parent, her it, should have been, it should have been discussed. Yeah. He's got this huge dowry coming apparently. <laughs> <His> so <dowry. laughs> is that, that's what it's called, right? He needs to pull his weight in some way shape or form here and since he's not done it every step of the way she's got to insist on a proposal that that satisfies her and that's his chance and if he doesn't even do that then i do not believe for one second that it does not bleed into the rest of the relationship i don't i agree he should he should come to her house with like one of those giant novelty checks (laughs) (laughs) with like a big bow on it (laughs) Uh, All right. We can step down off our soapboxes. Yeah. But we do feel strongly about this. We do. And I don't, again, people, I feel like people think we're always going to tell them to break up. No. That's not what we're saying at all here. I strongly feel they should stay together. And I strongly feel he needs to shape up his act. Yes. And I've said this before in a previous episode about how I do think there's a degree of mutual training that happens in a relationship. It often happens earlier than the four year mark. But nonetheless, he is not through his training. He's still on the wee wee pad. He is. <laughs> yeah, I haven't heard that one in a while, but yes, he is. He is. So he needs to upgrade to being fully potty trained in the proposal <laughs> department. That's right. That's where you, pre- you preface that with no offense. <laughs> But no offense, but is always the worst. Yeah. There's it, nothing good coming that, after that. It means that you're going to be very offended. Yeah. More so than if you hadn't said no offense. <laughs> totally. Yeah. <laughs> no offense guarantees future Guaranteed. offense. Locking in offense. Yes. Yeah. All right. If you enjoyed what you heard today, 
you can show your support for Dear Shandy by liking, subscribing, hitting the notification bell, leaving an iTunes review or a rating, telling your friends, and all the things you would do to keep a little podcast like ours trucking. Yep. And on that note, I think that's a wrap. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time on Dear Shandy. Bye. Dear Shandy.